Muskegon channel. I'm Andy O'Reilly. There's Dave Cagley. I was, uh, you know, I'm I'm more of the highbrow of the two of us. Um, I'm into the BBC and PBS and all those important, wonderful shows that add to our life, yeah. that give us education along with um, entertainment. Uh, Dave, on the other hand, is busy watching the Golden Girls reruns um, because, you know, Blanche, hot. Um, Shit, hey. Just saying. Nothing wrong with that. I get it. Um, but last night, I was uh, thumbing through the Book of Faces, and I stumbled upon, um, you know, those little history factoids that some people push out, and you read, and you're like, well, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I stumbled on one that I was truly fascinated with. Um, Boss Hog. Sorrel Book. Sorrel yes. Book. Yes. Boss Hog. J.D. Hog from the Dukes of Hazard. Mm -hmm. You had, and you know when you see a TV character and they're and they're just stuck in your mind as who they are, right? And then you learn something about them as a person. Do you, do you know what he did before he got into acting? I feel like I I knew what it was and then I forgot about it because it's 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 interesting. It, he was counterintelligence for the military. Oh he my spoke, God! Yes, he spoke twelve languages. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. Can you imagine being the stupid bastard on Earth somewhere that was sitting there one day in whatever freaking country he was from, and he was flipping channels, and he came to the staunch realization that Boss Hogg snowed him at one point? <laughs> well, it's better than Roscoe. <laughs> seriously no it's not better than roscoe was... because Ro i mean boss hog is just a short fat little dude and roscoe at least you got that image roscoe of... was dim though like kind of like <laughs> enos well enos was the dimmest that's why his name was enos but yeah i mean i that's a the fa War. that is really fascinating yeah and, and, and you know you gotta be you just gotta imagine somebody in one of the careers is sitting there one day Click, 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 you know, and what? Oh, my God. Yeah, so probably probably got a good dressing down for being snowed by Boss Hogg during oh, the yeah. Korean War. <laughs> you know, I think about when when I hear about things like that, especially like actors yeah. who have these really interesting lives bef either before they became actors or afterwards, whatever. Um, but, you know, like Boss Hogg, everything he's seen and everything that he knows. Oh, my God. And then you're on the set of the Dukes of Hazard, and maybe Catherine Bach, da aka Daisy Duke, is throwing a hissy fit about some piece of bullshit scene. Oh, I know, right? And he's thinking, yeah. "I'm sorry, this isn't that important." Yeah, you guys have no idea or, the way things yet. really worked or what's really going on or what Daisy or can throw really a hissy fit Kennedy. because she's Daisy. <laughs> can you imagine Tom Wolpat or John yeah, Snyder standing there oh, pissing yeah. and moaning, and Boss Hogg's just like. Mm. Yeah, come on. <laughs> no, but da yeah, and and don't get me wrong, love Daisy. Who doesn't? Love I'm just saying it's one of those things that who you know could have happened. Who didn't have a crush on Daisy when we were kids? I mean, <sighs> oh, but I Daisy? still think to her, uh, yeah, I'm not okay, and and I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna keep this above above board and clean. Yep. Battle of the Network Stars. Oh boy, Daisy Duke. Yep. Dunk Tank. That's all that needs to be said. I'm down. I, All that needs to be said. I was glued, I was glued to the team. I, I will salute. I will salute that again. There you go. That is that is Amer that is a, a, as America as America has That's ever been, my friend. That's what we and need ever again. will be. To hell with the price yes. right at night. Bring Give back, back Battle of the Night. Yes. Who's gonna get? You'd have a bunch of reality Dude, whack jobs can you going against each Battle other. Of the Big Network Brother Stars against today? Survivor. Who cares? It's gonna be. Those were real stars. You had Robert Conrad going against, you know. Steve Harvey versus Drew Carey in Steve, every episode. Ed Asner. <laughs> you had Billy Crystal. Steve Carvey and Drew Carey duking yeah. it out in every event. Yeah. And, and, you know, they'll probably be playing That's that right. stupid mini golf show. That's Battle oh, of the Network geez. Stars now. Yeah. Oh, God. Or that dumb the, thing where they're doing the Circus obstacle the course and some... Yeah, Circus of the Stars was also amazing because you thought one of those people could die. Yeah. They were, like, risking their lives for, like, an extra 
fifteen thousand dollars or something. I, you know, whatever the going rate was to be a, a fake performer in uh, nineteen eighty three. I don't know, but it, it was. Yeah, those were events were like that was all that would be on TV. So you'd be glued to it. Yep. It was like we all watched Battle of the Network Stars and Howard Cos. What made Battle of the Network Stars great was Howard Cosell covering it like this is a real sporting event. Like oh, yeah. these are this is really really important. Yep. And he 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 added drama to it. and that oh my god that goes. Gabe Kaplan of Welcome Back, Connor. He's faster than you would think. You know, all, it was amazing. Yep. Howard Cosell. Yeah. Oh, God. He puked on, um, who was the other? Don, Don Meredith. He threw Don up Meredith. on Don Meredith's boots, boots back in the early 70s, and they tried to pass it off as he'd had an ear infection, but, he'd yeah, also, right. but he it was, drunk. it was a game. I was actually just watching that game not too long ago on YouTube because I get nostalgic. I like to watch old games and stuff because yeah. it's just kind of like comfort food. And he started, it was halftime, and he was interviewing Don Mayer, and he was, and he, he was really slurring his his speech. And they tried to pass it off as uh, he'd been sick all week, he had an ear infection, and then he just drank too much. And Don Meredith later on in the broadcast, yeah, he, he got sick all over my boots. You know – you know who the intern was that was making the Manhattans for him? I have no idea. John Norris from MTV. Oh, really? Yep. That's interesting. Yeah, because he it was uh yeah he uh he John liked to Norris tip, was the he intern. Actually... And he was making Manhattans. That was his that was his sole purpose as an intern for Monday Night mm-hmm. Football was to make Manhattans for for, for uh, Howard for Howard Co- Howard Cosell Howard Cosell yeah because it was. Howard always thought he was a, like, there was a, people like, I loved Howard. A lot of people hated him. Yeah. I loved him. Yeah. And I looked at it as a performance. I mean, this is, he's obviously got a huge ego. He's a narcissist. He's everything good and bad that you could say about him. Yep. But he was so, as a, just as a broadcaster, and you, you and I are in tune with that aspect of it. He was brilliant. Mm-hmm. His use of words and phrases, and he would do those highlights, those if you were a football fan in the 70s or 80s, the only time you got to see, like other than the Lions, other teams play or other highlights, it was Monday Night Football. Yeah. And you'd stay up and Howard Cosell would do that. And he'd do it with just a shot. Like he was doing that. He was ad-libbing it. He didn't have a script. He just knew what happened and he would describe it. And it was so brilliant and it was poetic and it was, it was amazing. He was Great. just, he was a wordsmith. He, uh, if you ever want to hear something great, there is a uh, Frank Sinatra concert called The Main Event mm-hmm. where he plays uh, Madison Square Garden. And mm-hmm. Howard Cosell actually does a walk-up as Frank Sinatra is coming into the arena. It's outstanding. It makes the wow. entire concert. So look, mm-hmm. maybe look it up on YouTube if the main event's there. Oh, or that's just definitely. The Howard Cosell walk-up because mm-hmm. he's talking about all the 70s stars that are nobody anymore mm. you know like rex harrison's here and it's like who <laughs> who cares <laughs> <laughs> so yeah give that a listen sometime anyway boss okay. hog there you go some All deep right. thoughts on boss hog and he snowed the world there you go by the way if you're if you're under the age of 47 and you have no idea who we've been talking about for the past 10 minutes it's it's that's on you that's look right. up Look do up little, your history. Do a little, hurt, do a little we'll history search. We were, we were expanding your cultural palate. That's what as we limited do. As, we're as wonderful as like there that. There you go. Absolutely. Let's do it. White House is suggesting the possibility of additional penalties that could be put in place on China. The action may take place if Chinese and makers of electric vehicles try to move their production to Mexico Ooh. to avoid new import taxes. The president directed the office of the U.S. trade representative to impose a total tariff of 102% in that event. It's basically, you know, China trying to backdoor to get into the U.S. government through Mexico also to avoid, you know, additional taxes. That's just everybody's everybody looks for a loophole. That's what you do. What else is going on? Uh, There's a new Name breaking into the top 10 of popular baby names in the U.S., Mateo 
knocked Benjamin off that list, according to data released by the Social Security Administration. Uh, uh, Mateo came in at number six. It was number 11 in 2022. Liam, the number one name for boys. Olivia, number Olivia. one for girls. I like that name. Olivia. That's, uh, that's Olivia's okay. I like it. I can't believe that's number one. Whatever yeah. happened to Sally or Nancy or um, Ashley? I like Ashley. Ashley's, Ashley's a good nice. One. Um, I've, I'm a fan of hyphenated names. I like, uh, yeah. names like Mary Ann, um, uh, Peppermint Patty. Uh, um, what? Hey, Julianne. I like that. Julianne um, solid. I like, um, just like the hyphenated names. You know, I, I, yeah. I like those. Um, what else do I like? I like, um, Elise is one of my favorite. Uh, girl's names emma really i think emma is one emma, of my yeah, i've got a niece emma, emma but yeah emma emma's is a, a good that's name. a throwback that came back that's one of the few olden timey names that yeah. came back oh, olivia is too olivia, oh, is, a yeah, olivia is too yeah. yeah i think i guess you're right that's interesting I'm waiting for i like Le- liam's okay liam's all right yeah when, when is Marilyn going to make the big resurgence Marilyn, that is that shocks me that Marilyn hasn't made it because everybody loves Marilyn monroe yeah but then I think there's a stigma also attached to the name, you know? I don't know. Maybe. Weird. It is odd. Yeah. Finally, higher speed limits in the state of Michigan have led to more deaths on the roadways. Michigan's 2017 law jacks speed limits up to 75 miles per hour on over 600 miles of rural freeways. This has led to a nearly 20% increase mm-hmm in highway fatalities over the last uh, basically half decade plus. And this was, and they said that this was an unintended consequence. Now you knew this was going to happen. You jack speeds up, people are gonna go, obviously gonna go faster. It always leads to more death. It always does. You just decide that that's an acceptable amount of deaths for people to be able to get places faster. I mean. You really wanted to to curtail deaths. You drop speed limits back to fifty five. Yeah, well, and then you can then you can issue more speeding tickets. Dude, I'm here to tell you. What. And then that'd be more that then that'd be more revenue. Nobody's so there gonna you go. go seven, nobody's gonna go fifty five ever again, because even at seventy five, they're doing eighty and fifty five zones already. Um, get out on the highway, and it's there's your proof. They haul ass yeah. everywhere. Um, I, I. I guess I'm at the age where I sit there in just wonderment as to why you mm-hmm. need to do 90 between Muskegon and Grand Rapids. Yeah, I, it doesn't. Yeah, I, I don't get it. That all right, make sense to me. that's fine. But on the other side of the coin, if we're seeing more traffic deaths with all this and a little higher speed limits and all that kind of stuff, where does that put us when driving becomes autonomous? What is you well, you're gonna thinking have, about oh, you're that because deaths. it ain't far off. And oh yeah, you're how right. Are we, how are people going to adapt to the lack of control inside a vehicle and believing oh, in you're I think they've done I think they've done very well in slowly mm-hmm. adapting people to accept the idea that cars are going to be able to drive themselves. If you look mm-hmm. back to about I 2009 right. when I had that old uh, Escalade, mm-hmm. it was the the very beginnings of getting used to autonomous vehicles because there were some alert mm-hmm. lights in the back that would sense things around you and it would uh you know give you a little flash saying hey there's something back here to look for there's something back there to look for you could see it in your mirrors it was telling you there were some sensors working and things like that and since about then they've graduated into hey not only not only is it going to tell you where the things are with sensors around your car but there's going to be a camera on the roof that's going to look all around your car Mm-hmm. And here, here's a screen. Look at your screen. Ooh, isn't that cool? Now you can see all around oh, yeah, your car. And hey, guess what? Gr- this car can park itself. Watch this. Yeah. And people are like, "Hey, well, that's a pretty cool gadget." If they were to do, if they would have come out with all that technology in one vehicle all at once, people would have just freaked. They, it would have mm-hmm. been a dead in the water, on the spot. No way in hell we're gonna do it but they've softened the market to accept mm-hmm. all of these changes so slowly and so precisely that people are buying into it. And it's yeah. not, I don't think yeah. it's a bad thing. I think it's probably smart. No, you're, 
but it's the you're going to eliminate a lot of death because it, it's going to be much travel when that becomes the main thing you, you're going to eliminate the vast majority of accidental Stupid deaths. human decisions yeah yeah and which is good because you know we're losing you know, we talked about you know the, the fertility rate going down right the population kind of we're losing people we're, we're not making people fast enough to replace the old people that we're losing and then the 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 life expectancy has gone down slightly so yeah that that will help somewhat and i think and i i look forward to the day where i don't have to try right <laughs> just sitting in the seat chilling out taking a nap uh, it's out of my hands that's it we'll see i know no i there's no such thing as distracted passenger riding you just right. sit there you could knit there you go you could make doilies you, i could knit absolutely i could make a sweater because be my old bones gets cold yes they do or a scarf start with a scarf work up to the sweater anyway sports tigers fall in miami one to nothing in 10 innings it was the cubs falling what are you sure they were in miami no they were in detroit oh that's why you got it they were in detroit it yeah I, I i'm pretty sure that yeah i just said okay. uh, they fall to miami one to nothing here's in what 10 happens innings. when you get a ding you pick what? yourself up and you keep right on going champ yeah i'm fine i don't mind it doesn't bother me okay cubs lose cubs lose cubs lose again to hot atlanta seven to nothing that was an inadvertent one no that was my what purpose you me twice? for what for saying cubs lose cubs no, lose you cubs said lose? it didn't bother you but clearly it bothers you it doesn't bother me why is your face but you did but it bothers me when you do it erroneously Sounds like to me like you're getting all angry I'm not angry. See, this is why you tried to pull before we went on air. Say is it something. You look, you look all fed up about something. Up? You're, you're angry. Yeah. Okay. So you tried <laughs> to get me. Look at you. Thank God I just picked up my Max pills earlier. So uh, Max I got pills. The, what uh, those do? Those are oh, those are my. It's my blood pressure medication. Oh, I okay. My Max pills. pills. Good. Good. Are you done? I'm done. Oh, oh you're done. Okay. I didn't, thought maybe you wanted to be angry some more. I was gonna let you. No, I was gonna let of you course not. I'm fine. You sure? No, look at this. Look at this healthy glow. There's another bell for you. Did that do anything? Yeah. You know, just gonna ignore it. Okay. A Ford Fiesta for a thousand. Robert Ford met with Missouri's governor to plan the 1882 murder of this outlaw, and the governor gave Bob a quick pardon for it. I'm gonna guess Jesse James. Well, that was just a freebie again. Fifty six thousand three hundred well, in the hole. Gonna give you a win today, Dave. I think that's an amazing yeah. thing. We learned a lot. We learned about Boss Hog. Yes, we did. We talked mm -hmm. about uh, Battle of the Network Stars. We learned about Frank Sinatra and Howard Cosell doing an intro. Yes. Um, we found out that you are totally cool unless you hear a bell, then your face goes like this. And then we. Moved on to the night. When I hear an erroneous bell. Oh, no, it wasn't a erroneous. bell that was misplaced. It no, was. No, that was just that. You did test. that. That was a test of your fortitude. My patience? No, my fortitude is unquestionable. It's it's ongoing. It's it's, it's constant. Mm -hmm. Hey, guess what? The intestinal fortitude. Here yes. comes that incredible new weather gal, Tegan Schultz. Have yourself a great Wednesday. See ya. Happy Wednesday, Muskegon. We've got some sunshine today and tomorrow, but some showers coming in on Friday. So let's take a look at that forecast brought to you by Trinity Health. There's a high pressure system moving into West Michigan that's gonna bring some dry and sunny weather for Wednesday and Thursday, which then we might see a chance of rain on Thursday night moving into Friday. And we should stay clear after that until early next week when we see the possibility of some more storms. Your Wednesday will be mostly sunny with a high around 71. It will be a bit breezy with winds out of the northeast around 10 to 15 miles per hour. Those will calm down as we move into the evening though, coming out of the east at just 5 to 10 miles per hour and will cool down to about 49 degrees, but it will stay mostly clear. And our highs across the county are very similar today. Many of us in the low 70s, we are still pretty chilly along the lake shore. 
but we do have those warm temperatures continuing as we move through the rest of the week. Thursday, we do get a little bit cloudier, but our high is still going to be around 70, our low around 55, a little bit warmer at night. We do have a 60% chance for some rain showers starting Thursday night and a 50% chance during the day on Friday for some rain, which continues through Friday night and possibly Saturday morning with a 30% chance of some rain showers. This weekend will stay very warm with highs in the low 70s, 72 for Saturday with partly cloudy skies. Same thing for Sunday, just a little bit cooler around 71. As we move into next week though, we see some chances for some thunderstorms and of course some more rain, another 30% chance for Monday and cooler temperatures as well, just a bit around 68 degrees for Monday and 70 and 67 for Tuesday. That is all for your Wednesday forecast brought to you by Trinity Health for the Muskegon Channel. I'm Tegan Schultz, and I hope you all enjoy that sunshine today.